Hello, my name's Anna Bartlett and today we're going to deal with a problem that just a few of my students have, which is too many paintings. So I've spoken to my sister about this and she's done a few of my classes and she has quite a few of them in her front room. But I've said to her, look, you don't have to have them on the wall for, for all time. You can cut them off the frame and make them into book covers and all sorts of things and she has told me that there is no way she could even imagine cutting a painting off the frame so today i'm going to demonstrate it for you and we're going to turn a painting like this it could really be any painting you could get a painting from an op shop or i don't know just one that you've just had enough of if you own it you can do whatever you like with it really um, unless it's an absolute masterpiece in which case you'd be crazy but if it's something you've enjoyed but it's past its time and it's ready to be re reused in another way. This is the project, well, this is one of the projects for that. So today we're gonna to make canvas covered books. So I've got a couple of examples here. So very simple books and we're going to bind them with uh, the sewing machine actually. So very, very simple, but using the canvas from here and making something useful out of them. Another thing that I like to use these books for is for particular projects. So I've over the years had so many notebooks that might have been filled with all sorts of things and because I'm aging I suppose I finally figured out that it's easier to leave or have one notebook per project or one notebook book per conference or seminar and then I know which one to get off the shelf to remind me of the notes that I needed from that particular event. So um, this, this sort of a thing could be used for Christmas card lists it could be used for uh, holiday notes or a holiday journal. So it's totally up to you what you use them for. But I think there's nothing wrong with having a few. This could be in your handbag um, for all sorts of no, incidental notes, kids' school notes, whatever you need it for. Okay, so just a few ideas. But we'll end up with these lovely, very unique and special notebooks. Okay, I have based it on a moleskin type uh, design. Uh, as you can see here, it's really just machine stitched on the, on the spine there as well. They add an extra pocket in the back though, but these are really useful sizes and, and, and a lot of people use them of course. So the other thing you could use if it's not actual canvas like on a painting, I also paint on this canvas paper. So I end up with things like, like this. And this isn't a painting that I was so happy with that I needed to display it, it's really a, a second, I suppose. So this is another thing that you could turn into a book cover by using exactly the same process as we're doing today. So let's get started. Okay, so the things we need for this project are, we need obviously the canvas and we'll need some paper. So I'm just using uh, A4 sized photocopy paper, but you can use any paper you like. I'm also using a few little clips, they need to be quite tight, we'll be using that when we're stitching the, uh, the book in. And obviously we need a knife, a cutting knife, and a sewing machine. So let's get started with the fun stuff. Get this out of the way. The first thing you need to do is to cut your canvas off the frame. So it's as simple as this. So our canvas is now off and we've got this fabulous thing to use. I love the varnish on it. I love um, that it's like a protective layer, but um, now the options are endless. Okay, now I do like to, if, if you've got string on the back of your canvas, I do usually unscrew those and I'll save that and use it on another canvas later on. Okay, so don't waste your D hooks and your string if you, if you don't have to. Okay, so we'll put those away for now and here we have our book cover our new book cover so today I'm going to do one that's a4 size so it's bigger a bigger fairly big one and that will make it easier for you to watch what I'm doing but firstly we'll just figure out where on this picture we want the fold to be 
So I'm thinking I'd like the elephant's face on the front cover of the book. So if you have a pattern, obviously it's not as big a deal where things end up. But if you've got something like this, it might be nice to get that eye on the front cover. So let me just fold this piece of paper in half. We'll get an idea of how big the book is. Now with my sample books, I actually have an extra fold on some of them. So if you've got uh, that much left over and you'd like to keep that and make it more like a pouch, that's certainly an option if you keep it long on one side. But otherwise, if you want to cut it short to just be like a normal book cover, it's slightly larger. I've left it slightly larger than the paper inside. Okay. So it's up to you if you want to have that extender wrapping around. I think it would look a bit funny cutting off his, his uh, trunk in this instance. So I'm just going to make a book that fits. Okay, so I actually need a pair of scissors. So I'll grab those now. They should have been in my supplies list. Let's just get a bit of an idea of what we're going to use here. Now, of course, I'm just cutting roughly around the shape. Oop, you see it is quite rough, which gives us plenty of room to play. Oh, look at those lovely flowers. That could be another, another little cute notebook there using those flowers. Okay, so don't throw away those good bits. But looking in here, it just gives makes it a bit smaller for us to play with. I'm just going to cut it down a little bit more and we'll trim it much neater at the end. Okay. All right. So we've got a, a rough size for our cover here. It really, I haven't used any rulers. I haven't worried about anything at all there. And it's ready to go. The next thing I need to do is to fold all of the pieces of paper uh, so that they're ready to go. Now I've pre-folded all the individual sheets and then I'll slot them inside each other. Did a bit of a practice with this. Um, I tried five sheets, so that will give you 20 pages, which is plenty for a lot of projects. Um, but the, the, the sewing machine actually went really well up to 10 sheets, so that would give 40 pages. So uh, don't think that it has to be really thin. The thing with the sewing machine is that we will change the needle before I go back to sew fabric with it. So. It's basically a project like this by sewing paper is costing you the price of a needle. Okay. Just do three there. Oh, what's another one here? Just matching up those very corners there and using the side of my nail, my thumbnail there, to get a really sharp fold. Okay, so the sharpest fold, you could use a bone folder if you have one, or even the side of a clean ruler. But folding them all individually, what am I up to here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do another four. Seven. Now, you'll notice I'm not folding them all together because you simply won't get such a crisp fold and it won't sit inside. It's, it's called a signature. Uh, this one with a set of pages. And it won't sit inside quite as neatly. So it's worth the extra few minutes to fold all of them individually. Okay, so now I've got my 10 pages ready to go. I'm lining it up approximately with the center of my, my roughly cut cover. And then I'm going to use these, I might have to bring it a little closer to one end. I'm gonna use my clips to mark it in place or hold it in place while I sew. So I did try using pins when I did my samples, but found they actually moved around quite a lot. So. I really do like using clips to keep things together. There we go. All right. So that will be folding into a book a bit like that 
and we are ready to sew. So we're ready to sew now. I'm here at my trusty old sewing machine. Now I'm using black thread today, mainly because it's easier for you guys to see, but you can use obviously any thread color of your choice, but black for me today, I've used it on both the bobbin and the thread. Now I'm making a straight stitch as long as possible. So I'm going to go all the way up to five on my machine here and keeping it straight. Now I'm going to start just beyond where the paper starts here. And I'm lining it up on the fold as best I can. Whoops, there we go, do that again. And I do have, I have a half, um, a half speed button on my machine. Uh, if you do have that, I think it helps me slow down and make sure I'm doing it as carefully as I can. But if you don't have that half speed button, just go as slowly as you can okay don't get wobbly or anything but there's no need to rush this especially if it's the first one that you've done okay so I'm just starting slightly beyond the paper's edge making sure it's all clamped nicely in place and keeping an eye on where that fold line is let's go nice long steady stitches guiding You really want to speed up, but if we can keep it as steady as possible. There we go. I'm going all the way off the edge here and cutting it off. So there we go. The sewing is done. All we need to do now is neaten up our edges. So here we are, we've got our book ready to trim. So opening it up now, I just do this by eye, but you could use a cutting mat and the, the slicer again, but I am just going to, so I don't worry too much about things that might slow me down, like measuring when we're not doing anything here that requires perfection. So, I think I need to oil my, my scissors though. Just doing it about half a centimetre out. I'm not even worrying about tying off the thread. I think for the number of pages in this book and for the likely things I'll be using it for, if it comes undone a little bit, it's not going to fall apart and I'm not going to stress. If you are the sort of person who will stress about it, feel free to tie off those ends at the top and bottom with the thread. But I do like speed and just doing this by eye adds that real handmade touch, I think. About half a centimetre all around. By all means, if, it's, if it stresses you not to measure it, go ahead and measure it. Look, as you use this, it might get a little more tattered on the edges actually. So giving that little bit of extra there means if you want to trim it um, at a later date, you've still got a little bit of area there to trim it down. So now we have the finished notebook. It's a unique piece of art repurposed. Uh, in a very useful way. So I think and I suspect that once you start making these notebooks and with the sewing machines out and it's easy, uh, it's a bit hard to stop. It'd be nice to have even one a month, like give it to the kids. Some gratitude journals are all the rage, whatever you need to do. So uh, be adventurous with the paper that you put in it as well. You could use um, all sorts of leftover paper. Actually, what would be really great to use would be the papers out of your kids' um, school books because my kids have just finished the year and there's all sorts of papers there they have grid pages and they have red and blue lined pages but a mix of those pages would make a really groovy um, new art notebook okay so I hope you've enjoyed that and I would love to see some of the repurposed canvas notebooks that you come up with um, you could add ribbon or trim or whatever you do but I look forward to seeing what you do and I hope you've enjoyed doing this project with me today see you soon